in this session we are going to discuss about the control systems first of all we'll discuss about what do we mean by a system and the types of systems what do we mean by measurement and control systems then the types of control systems as open loop and closed loop systems and finally we'll discuss about sequential controllers first of all regarding the system from the mechatronics point of view the system is considered as a black box where there is some input and there is some output coming out of the system we are concerned with the relationship between output and input and what is going inside the system so that we are not bothered about so like in the case of transfer function so as an example we take uh, electric motor where power is given as the input and rotation of the shaft is taken as the output then the systems are further classified into linear or non-linear systems based on the type of differential equation they are also classified as deterministic or stochastic based on whether we are able to predict the behavior of the system or not so if we are able to predict the behavior of the system in near future that system is called as deterministic system alternatively if we are not able to predict the behavior of the system because of many other parameters like you can say friction model the rain model falling of the leaves number of vehicles going on the road the road conditions the weather conditions all these parameters are stochastic in nature where there is no specified model available so then comes how to identify from the differential equation whether a system is linear or non-linear so this is a typical differential equation of a system where the parameters a and b if both the parameters are constant then the system is called a linear system and if the parameters a and b take any of the values like any function of x which may be like x dot of t or even x of t or x square of t or x double dot of t or it is any transcendental function like sin x or cos of x or if it is any exponential function or logarithmic function if a b happens to be any such of these functions then the above differential equation is called as non-linear differential equation so let's say if you go to industry and uh, your immediate mentor asks you to identify that whether this system is a linear system or non-linear system without knowing about the system at all so that can be done by using simple method like you should start with giving a input x1 which should result in an output y1 so then to the system give another input x2 resulting in an output y2 so these two inputs are sufficient so in order to identify the system give a third input to the system x which should be a linear combination of the previous two inputs like ax1 plus bx2 and if the corresponding output is also in the same order like a y1 plus b y2 then the system is called as linear system so this principle is called as the principle of superposition which holds good for only linear systems next we'll discuss about the types of system which are broadly classified into two types like measurement systems and control systems the control system is further classified as open loop control system and closed loop control first of all regarding the measurement system a measurement system is again like a black box for making measurements where on the input side you are having the quantity being measured and on the output side you are having the actual value of that quantity being displayed let's take the example of a thermometer to the thermometer we feed the body whose temperature needs to be measured and the output of the thermometer is the display which should be like a rise of the mercury level in the thermometer the measurement system is made up of three basic elements the first element is sensor the next one is signal conditioner and the last element is the display unit the sensor is the first element which takes the quantity being measured as the input and it gives the output sometimes it happens that the output from the sensor is not adequate for the display unit this output is either too low or it is too noisy so that's why we need the second element which is called a signal conditioner so if the output from the sensor is too low the 
job of the signal conditioner is to amplify the output and if the output from the sensor is too noisy then the function of this signal conditioner is to filter the signal so then the output from the signal conditioner is fed to the display unit which will give you the final value of the parameter so let's take the example of a digital thermometer where the sensor is the semiconductor device and it will give the output as potential difference which is not enough so we'll use the operational amplifier as the signal conditioner which acts as the amplifier to increase the voltage range which should be adequate for the display unit to showcase that value next comes the control system which is also treated as a black box to control some variable to a definite value most of the control system comes with a feedback device so the input to the control system is the desired value of the parameter and the output is the actual value this actual value is being fed back with the help of a sensor or feedback device let's take the example of uh, the human body cycle so we know that the desired temperature for our body is 98.6 degree fahrenheit and the actual temperature we can measure with the help of a thermometer which will act as sensor if there is any discrepancy in this desired temperature and actual temperature then it is a cause of concern but our natural body cycle control system will work automatically in order to keep the desired temperature at 98.6 degree fahrenheit so whether we go to canada where the temperature goes to minus 30 degree centigrade or if we go to let's say west indies where the temperature might go above 50 degree centigrade so in extreme summer we used to sweat whereas in extreme winter we used to shiver so irrespective of these two highly contradictory environmental conditions our human body control system will try to keep the body temperature at 98.6 degree fahrenheit so that's about the natural control system then comes the first category of the control system which is open loop control system so where there is only input and output but there is no feedback device so which means that the control system does not have any parameter to improvise or modify the performance of the system whatever is the output coming from the system so if that is found to be satisfactory in those such examples we can deal with open loop control system the open loop control systems are still very popular because they are simple they are extremely cheap but they are a little bit inaccurate let's take the example of a thermometer so to the thermometer we feed the body whose temperature needs to be measured it will sense and it will display the body temperature but the thermometer does not have any measure to modify the body temperature let's take the example of something from day to day life let's say we stand on one leg with both the arms in the air and let's try to close the eyes so as we close the eyes our sensory feedback to the mind is disconnected so we'll try to wobble the next example is the pizza hut shop so if you see any typical pizza hut shop in a mall so the main control objective of the pizza hut shop is to sell maximum pizzas and as well as to satisfy the customers by keeping minimum waiting time if you see clearly the pizza hut shop does not have any sensor to identify or to measure that how many people are going to enter in their shop in the next 30 minutes but based on their statistical data or based on their performance of the last one month they should be able to do their job in a decent manner the next example is of toll plaza it's very difficult to predict that how many vehicles are going to enter the toll plaza in the next one hour so all these are typical examples of open loop control system which works fine in day to day life the next category is the closed loop control system so let's take the example of uh, automatic climate control in a car where will irrespective of the temperature outside whether it is 40 degree or let's say 10 degrees in winters we set the cabin temperature to 24 degree centigrade similar thing with the cruise control let's take the example of a human body cycle which will try to regulate the body temperature at a desired value of 98.6 degree fahrenheit so if we go to canada where the temperature is minus 30 degree centigrade or if we go to west indies where the temperature is in the range of 50 degree centigrade like in in winters we like to shiver whereas in summers we like to sweat a lot so irrespective of all these weather conditions our human 
body cycle control system will try to keep the body temperature at 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. This figure shows the block diagram of a closed loop control system where we are having a plant to which we will give the desired value and we will measure its actual value with the help of uh, some sensor that will be fed back. From here we will construct the error signal and the function of the controller is to minimize this error. The output of the controller is control input which will be fed to the plant. Next we can see the closed loop control system in more detail where we are having three units one is called as the comparison unit control unit and correction unit so the function of this comparison unit is to compare the difference between desired and actual output the function of the control unit is to take the decision it is basically working as a mind the function of the correction unit is to execute the decision taken by the control unit so at the correction unit all the physical actuators will come which will be there to compensate for that error signal so we'll discuss this in more details in by taking couple of examples next we are going to discuss the sequential control system where the control actions are either time driven or they are event driven to execute these control actions in a systematic manner we need to make electric circuits which are operated with the help of relays or there are cam operated switches so we'll take the example of let's say power stroke in a car where we can see that with the help of uh, cam shafts the power stroke has been executed in different cylinders and the firing order has been set next we can take the example of a domestic washing machine the controller of that washing machine execute number of steps at different times so like pre wash cycle main wash cycle then there is a rinse then there is a spin and there is a dryer at the end so all these steps are executed at different times that's why it's called a sequential control system next we'll discuss the example of automatic washing machine which is a typical closed loop control system containing multiple cycles so in this we need to identify the each component in detail so first of all regarding the system so in this case the washing machine drum is the system under study next we choose the desired program which will set the desired value of all the different parameters so first of all we need to identify those parameters which are important from the control point of view of course the washed cloth is one of the outputs but if we see from the controller point of view there are other parameters which are also important so the first parameter in this category is the water level the controller needs to know that how much level of water is present in the washing machine drum at present this will be measured with the help of let's say water level sensor which will be fed back so based on the desired program the machine control unit will instruct the pump which will act as a correction unit to raise the level of the water to desired value so the next output is the water temperature so to measure the water temperature there is a thermistor which will act as a temperature sensor so which will be fed back so then the error in water temperature will be constructed then the machine control unit will decide that in order to nullify this error in water temperature it will instruct the heater to do the job so next is the door opening closing the door must be closed for the machine before executing the next cycle so this opening and closing of the door can be sensed with the help of limit switches so accordingly it will be fed back and error in the door open close will be executed and the machine control unit again will instruct the corresponding motor to take the necessary action so the next output from the washing machine drum is the motor speed at different cycles the motor speed is different so this motor speed is measured with the help of uh, the sensor called as encoder and the error in speed is calculated and the machine control unit will again direct the motor to nullify this error so the next output could be the money left if we see a typical washing machine deployed at a multi-story building where we can see that how many cycles a sing any user wants to have so accordingly a standard money is set so let's say if the person wants to have three cycles let's say each cycle will cost around 20 rupees the person can feed 60 rupees so based on the money left it will show the display on its display screen that how many cycles are still left so accordingly the error will be constructed in the money left section and the machine control unit will instruct the machine to continue for the next cycle or it should stop working 
so this is how we can see there are different outputs and we need to identify their proper feedback device or sensors through which those outputs can be sensed finally we need to select the proper correction unit through which the compensation error and finally we need to choose the correct correction unit through which the error can be nullified next let's take the example from uh, day to day life selection of a new player in an ODI team the new player is the system which we want to study depending upon the balance of the team the new player could be a batsman a bowler a wicket keeper or an all rounder so first of all we will set some standard parameters which will be called as the desired output of the new player then based on this we will measure the output of the player in the last 6 to 8 months or 1 year so the first output is you can say performance in Ranji trophy, Deodha trophy, IPL in the last 6 to 8 months what is the sensor in this case? so the sensor which will give us the live performance updates is like you can say Crick Info or Crick Buzz so the moment the player let's say strikes a 6 or 4 so all its average strike rate, number of 6's, number of 4's will be updated in real time so that will be fed back and then error in performance will be calculated so then the control unit will be the BCCI selection panel and based on the error in performance the selection panel will decide that for that player whether it needs to send that player to the national cricket academy or they want to test or try another player so the next output for the player is the fitness entirely independent of the previous output parameter whether the player is performing well or not so if its fitness is not good then the player should not be selected so in order to measure the fitness so the sensor is typically yojo test so based on this yojo test actual fitness of the player will be fed back so then the error in fitness is calculated and again the the selection panel will decide whether to send the player for fitness training or not the next output is steroids so even though player is performing well the fitness of the player is extremely good the player has taken some steroids so then the player should not be selected in order to measure the steroids so we have the doping test so the doping test will act as a sensor so which will feed the performance of the player and then error in this steroids will be calculated and then the selection panel will decide whether to give a chance to that player or we should go for the another player the next output parameter is injury so that injury will be reported with the help of uh, x-ray scanning by the doctors so based on that report the error in the injury will be calculated and again the selection panel should take the decision and it will consult the physio so whether the injury is severe or not and finally the teamwork so along with all these parameters from the feedback from the dugout will be taken into account and finally the selection panel can ask the player to go for some teamwork sessions so this is how we can see uh, example of uh, the closed loop control system where different colors you can see it will represent one single cycle based on one single output the sensor and the correction unit based on that particular cycle so in the next you can try some practice problems which are discussed in the last couple of slides you can try to make similar way the block diagrams and practice thank you